What I want to describe here is a simple current mirror so that when I go on to uh, describing how to build a basic operational amplifier we'll have a better understanding if we first get an understanding of what the current mirror does. So this circuit here is a very simple current mirror. I've labelled in some points here. Point A, which is the collector of Q1, B, the base of Q1 and the base of Q2, and G, which is the ground power of the emitter from Q1. Now, the purpose of the current mirror is to take this current IL and replicate it over here on the load, IR. We want the current that passes through this load to be fixed at all times. So this is what the current mirror is able to do for us. Whatever the current is here, I'll call this left, IL, will be replicated across on the right hand side of this circuit across this load. No matter what this current is, this current will always emulate it. Now how does it do that? Well, I'll just go through some scenarios and explain how this current IR is always equal to this current IL. Firstly, the first thing to note in the transistor Q1 here is that the collector is also connected to the base. Now, by, collect by connecting the collector to the base, we're in effect forming a PN junction diode. Uh, so this, from, from A here to G, is in effect a diode. Uh, What's happening here is that because we've connected point A to point B, we've effectively shorted this part of the circuit. So all we've got is a, base, is a, a PN junction diode between the base of Q1 and the end of the emitter here. So you might say, well, why not just use uh, a diode instead of a transistor? Well, if we used a diode, uh, we wouldn't actually have the, the secondary effect, which I want to explain in a minute, is that this base is also connected to the second transistor, Q2. If we just used a diode, we wouldn't be able to connect the circuit to this, to this right-hand side of the, of the diagram here. So I'll just describe how we're able to emulate this current IL across to IL with a couple of scenarios. First of all, let's imagine that we have a volt voltage spike appearing at point A. Now when that happens, the voltage at A is of course identical to the voltage at B. So if we have a voltage spike at A, the voltage will increase at B, hence the PN junction diode will actually be forward biased more so that the current between A and G will increase. Now that we've got a, a larger current flowing between A and G, then obviously the voltage that is dropped between A and G will be reduced. Hence what we've done is we've now reduced the voltage at A, and of course that will then of course reduce the voltage at B. Now with the voltage at B being reduced, this forward biased junction, PN junction now, will be below 0 0.6 or, or getting close to below 0 0.6. Hence, what we're doing then is cutting off this flow of current. So by cutting off this flow of current, A then uh, gravitates back towards the source voltage. And so we're back where we started. We've now got a high voltage at A, a high voltage at B, and the forward uh, PN junction diode is then, or the, the forward PN junction then, is then forward biased again. So we're back where we started. So you can see, even if we get a voltage spike at A, we still get back to where we were. And obviously that means if we have a short from here to ground, then the current is just purely defined by the voltage source here and what we call here the programming resistor, RPG. So the left-hand current, IL, is simply VSS over RPG. Now, as I said before, because the base here is also connected to the transistor Q2, whatever the base voltage is here will affect the, the, the forward 
biased junction between B and E, the PN junction between B and the emitter, so that will be always the same as the junction voltage drop between B and the emitter of Q1. If that's the case, then we'll always have whatever the current is flowing through IL obviously must then flow through IR. So this is how we regulate the current of IR. We're basically forcing by this feedback effect uh, the base voltage here, which is emulated across to Q2. So, matter, so no matter what we have in the load here, it could be any kind of circuit at all, the current coming in obviously is the same as the current coming out, and it will always be equal to IL. So I've just written here IL equals VSS over RPG, which is the same as IR. So that, in essence, is how the simple current mirror works. Just to look at another scenario, just to hammer this home maybe a little bit more, is we could also imagine, say, that uh, this point here, at the end of the emitter on Q1 and to ground, maybe the resistance for some reason has increased. Maybe this, uh, it started to deteriorate, and then all of a sudden this resistance starts to increase suddenly. If that's the case, then obviously the voltage drop between B and E will be lowered. So now we've got less of a voltage drop across this PN junction diode. So then we've got less of a current flow down here, which means that A now is driven higher towards the, the source voltage, which then implies that B will be driven higher, therefore will increase this, you know, so it will it will actually then negate the actual drop by increasing now to compensate for this uh, higher resistance. So you can see that the feedback is actually regulating this whole circuit. And if you can see that, you can see that that's a, a very neat thing because it means that no matter what's happening here with heat uh, and, all, and, and kind of spikes or resistance changes, this current is always going to be fixed to VSS over RPG. Well, that's the ideal case. I mean, in reality, of course, it's not perfect, but uh, this is pretty good. Uh, there are other current mirrors which are better than this, but for, for to, to understand what's going on, this is, this is what you need, really, to just be able to follow this uh, simple current mirror. In, a later, in the next video, or the next few videos, I'm going to explain how to build a very basic operational amplifier which uses this uh, current mirror. It's not going to be as advanced as uh, you know the, uh, the 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 IC units you can buy, but it allows you to build your own operational amplifier and to be able to understand what a differential amplifier is. It's a great way to go. So uh, please uh, watch the next video as we go further with this and explain how we use this simple current mirror to construct a basic operational amplifier. Okay, thank you.